Biden came to the presidency trying, um, um, saying that he would be a un uniter, and you know, he has united everyone, almost everyone against him. Yes. How did that happen? Rick, uh, Daniel, <laughs> go ahead. I think Biden's fundamental problem is, is that he was elected not be Donald Trump. Yep. Uh, I yep. think a lot of the American people were tired of all the, the fighting and the drama and the tweeting, and Biden seemed like a safe choice. He was a sort of a bland career politician, uh, and the thought was that, well, he'll get in there and we'll have a so-called return to normalcy. Unfortunately, the Democratic Party is now controlled by the hard left, the Bernie Sanders, the Elizabeth Warren types. And so Biden was supposed to be a unifier, but he comes in with a hard left agenda, thinking he's, he's going to be another Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, and the American people uh, aren't very happy about giant increases in the tax burden and the burden of government spending, not to mention Afghanistan and the pandemic and things like that. Uh, I think Biden is like a deer in the headlights because Having been a career politician who simply punched a clock and, and did whatever sort of the consensus was for the Democratic Party, he's now caught in a Democratic Party that wants to do radical things that just aren't where the American people are. Dan, do you see the Biden administration is ideological? Dan. I think the Biden administration is ideological. I think they do have a left-wing agenda. Now, what's interesting, uh, marrying to what was just said, this left-wing agenda somehow is perfectly okay with some of the financial elite on right. Wall Street and elsewhere. The uh, they, they've sort of struck yeah. this deal yeah. in their own minds that, okay, we'll go along with these higher taxes so long as we get the easy money, the artificially low interest rates that goose the financial markets. Now, in the long run, I think that's a very misguided trade that these rich people are making are supporting the left and the Democratic Party. Uh, I think you wind up having bubbles that then burst. I don't think it's a very smart thing to do. I think given America's long-run fiscal challenges, expanding the welfare state simply creates the risk of a Greek-style fiscal crisis. So, you know, we can talk about BlackRock and Vanguard all we want. Uh, and yes, I think some of the elite who are sort of going along with the Biden administration are making a huge tactical, strategic, yep. political and economic mistake. But I don't think that changes the fact that it is a hard left agenda from the Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren wing of the Democratic Party that in effect has staffed the White House. You know, Dan, I'm going to ask you an odd question, and it's not a trick question. What, is a, what does it take to be a successful president? What is a successful presidency? Do you have an example in your mind? And if that, ex what, 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 that what example uh, could, the, the, given that example, how could it help Biden? Uh, it's not a trick question, I promise. Go ahead. If you want a successful presidency, I guess it first depends on your measurement of success. Sure, sure. Lyndon Johnson got a lot yeah. done. I think it was all very bad for the country. FDR got a lot done. Well, I think his policies helped keep us in a Great Depression uh, for a decade. On the other hand, Ronald Reagan got a lot done and I think uh, uh, restored America's economy. So it's hard to answer that question without uh, without right. showing your philosophical sure. colors. But But here's something I don't think we're appreciating. The reason we have so much of a challenge in the United States is we're not a parliamentary system. We're a separation of power system. So by definition, the way our founders created our country and our constitution, it made it very difficult for politicians in Washington to change things. Uh, and, and as a result, people get very frustrated. And then add on to that, that we, we're elections in the United States and political debates in the United States now aren't focusing on the things that I care about, like taxes and spending. They're focusing on things like uh, uh, race relations and wokeness and political correctness and abortion. In other words, the social and cultural issues now, I think, are playing a big, big role. And yeah. going back to what I said before, I think this is why some of the elite on Wall Street now identify more with Democrats, because culturally, they see a closer affinity. And this is why, say, low-income whites and Hispanics are now identifying more with Republicans. It's, it's not because they necessarily want small government like I want. They just don't like the woke agenda of the left. And, and this is really scrambling our politics, mixing in with our separation of power system, and just creating a situation where a lot of people get very frustrated.